is almost summertime in the United States and in this part of the world. That, of course, means hot temperatures. Today, get a little bit of relief. Temperatures in the mid-80s, sun shining brightly overhead. No chance of rain. That's what's most important today, as in Madison, Illinois, just outside of St. Louis with the arc in the background. We get set for the NASCAR Cup Series third race in Gateway. Michael McDowell and Austin Sendrick, a pair of Fords on the front row. Green flag is up in the air, and it's time to drop the hammer in St. Louis. Michael McDowell gets the jump and the hole shot on the way to turn one. Leaves Austin Sendrick and Christopher Bell to go wheel to wheel for second, and Sendrick gets loose in the middle of the corner and walks up the banking. May have got a help from his teammate, Ryan Blaney, there behind him as he was getting loose. So Bell through to second, Blaney down the inside of Sendrick as they head towards turn number three. With Tyler Reddick just in behind them. Blaney will, looks like he'll complete the pass in free. Sindrick again washes up the racetrack. Denny Hamlin also have a bit of a wiggle behind, but McDowell clearly the lead on, to, on lap one. Sindrick drifts wide off of four. He'll fall in line fourth. Pole sitter Michael McDowell leads lap number one of 240. He'll show the way under braking to turn one with Christopher Bell behind him. And oh, in the middle of the pack, Brad Keselowski gets punted up the banking in turn two by Daryl Wallace Jr. Hangs on to it, but loses about a half dozen positions. William Byron and Kyle Busch side by side for ninth position. Caution is out. We've got yellow on the speedway as the cars come down the back straightaway. We're yet to see who it's for. Ah, two cars spun off of turn two. So that brings out the caution. Two cars around on the exit of turn two and about midway down the back straightaway. John Hunter Nemechek was one. The other was Cody Ware. Cody Ware. Ware. Here comes the field up out of turn number four. McDowell, the pole sitter. Bell, the most recent race winner, comes into the restart zone. Green flag is up in the air, and we restart again on lap eight of 45 in this opening stage. McDowell didn't get as good of a jump as he did on the initial start here. He and Bell are door-to-door, -door, wheel to wheel, and nose-to-nose -nose for the leadoff two. Bell giving uh, as good as he gets through turns one and two. They'll be side-by-side -side off the corner. McDowell will... Jump in front. Will Bell sweep in behind him to pick up the slip shimmy? Will McDowell defending to, as they come around towards turn three to keep Christopher Bell behind him, which he does do as they enter the corner. Just behind them, the two Penske cars still side by side. Ryan Blaney trying to go around the outside of his teammate, Austin Sendrick. Tyler Reddick watching that battle. And then behind Reddick, you've got the two Gibbs cars, Denny Hamlin and Ty Gibbs battling. So Gibbs is in the sandwich of a pair of teammate battles. The fight for third is Blaney and Sendrick in turn two. Oh, boy, Keselowski is loose still right in front of Kyle Larson. Sorry to jump on you. That's right. Larson was trying to get around the outside to back out of it and still ended up with the run down the back straightaway to go past the inside. So again, numerology happening there. Five goes ahead of six. Caution. Oh, we have a yellow flag. Yellow lights flashing across the speedway, and we're under caution for another crash off turn two. And Cody, Cody Ware is Ware one again. of them again. And the 16 is down parked towards the wall on the exit of turn two. And again, gets it reversed and gets it pointing in the right direction. And he's Derek Krause. Well... The way we're going, Mike Joy's going to have another line for Cody Ware, and apparently oh. Derek Krause had a line for Cody Ware as he went by him on the back straightaway with a certain finger out the window, and I wouldn't think it was the index or pinky fingers. Came with a bit of a swerve as well as he uh, went past. Uh... McDowell again choosing the outside. He sees the green flag. He's on the button quickest, and he's got a nose in front of Christopher Bell on the way to turn one as we get back underway. Bell drives hard down into the corner. He'll get number to number with McDowell in turn two. Side by side again off the corner between the leaders. He had a good run at it last time on the restart with Bell, and he's trying again, but McDowell has held him off just behind them. Side by side again between the two Penske cars, Sindrick and Blaney. Hamlin is next up on his own, and it's free wide behind him as William Byron's trying to stuff it down the inside of Tyler Reddick as they get into free. All kind of madness going on further back in the pack, McDowell leading. But Byron with a twitch on the exit of turn four, had to step out of the throttle just a bit, but he is still on the attack on the way to turn one, and he's got the 23-11 cars just in behind him too as Byron continues to go after Denny Hamlin and company. Getting past Ty Gibbs in one and two that time. Smart-looking Valvoline color scheme on the Byron Mobile this week. Here comes Joey Logano, still continuing his march. He's got a very good short-run car, and he is moving forward, getting past Alex Bowman in turn three, and uh, trying to get uh, past Darrell Wallace as well, but didn't quite make it work. Here are the leaders off turn two, nose to tail. 
Very, very close this time, and Bell's got a bit of a run going, and he'll go again down the inside. Bit of side draft as they head towards three. The DeWalt number 20 this time gets fully alongside McDowell, but McDowell will have a bit more momentum, will he, off the top run in three and four. Looks like Bell did have a nose slightly ahead, but here comes McDowell. McDowell charges down the straightaway. He'll lead the lap once again. Now how aggressive will Bell get under breaking to turn one? He's going to lean on McDowell, force him way up the banking. They're side by side. Gets ahead coming out the corner. Can he oh. go or get across the front of him? No, he doesn't. Bit of contact with McDowell with more momentum off the top side. Side by side, McDowell has a very slight nose ahead. Into three they come again. And this is really good hard racing between these two at the front. But this time, Bell looks like he's completed the pass. McDowell comes back off the banking, but Bell has cleared him. So McDowell's just going to shove him down the straightaway. Bell goes to the lead with four to go in the stage. I don't think the fight is over. Certainly isn't. And Blaney's there to pick up any pieces, as I mentioned. Out of two they come. Bell to the lead for the first time this afternoon. Down the back straight. And has McDowell's chance of winning a stage uh, disappeared for the moment. Bell just starting to inch slightly ahead now that he's gone back to his traditional line up against the white line on the inside. Its leaders come to the line and begin the final lap of this stage. Christopher Bell leads to turn one. Michael McDowell is four car lengths back now. All three of the leaders way up the racetrack this time in one and two, trying to find some grip and some speed. But Bell looks secure midway down the back straight where they come. I don't think Blaney's going to be close enough here to challenge McDowell, but can he put him under some pressure to make a mistake? Out through three and four for the final time in stage one. Matthew, bring Christopher Bell to the green and white checker. Winner at Charlotte last week. We talk about how much this track resembles Phoenix. He was the winner there earlier this year, too. Comes to the green and white checkered flag here. He takes stage one of the Enjoy Illinois 300. It's his fourth stage win of the season, the ninth stage win of his career. Some drivers did stay out. So the jumbled up running order has Todd Gilliland and Kyle Busch on the front row, and they take the green flag together. Gilliland, who started second last on the grid, he's the leader. On the outside of row one, more laps led for front row, but for how long? Because Kyle Busch just stuffed it into the corner and took the lead away. Top six were the guys that stayed out oh. on that caution. At the end of the stage, as Chase Elliott almost got the wall coming out of two. Four wide down the back straight away. He, Blaney, oh, Austin Sindrick were doing the elevator move just in front of them. So top six stayed out. We've got Ryan Priest up there on two tyres. Stage winner Christopher Bell finds himself eighth on this restart. He's a mess through three and four. We're going to have to check with Chase Elliott because I think he did get the wall off of turn two. He's still running fine. Side by side with Chase Briscoe across the line. Behind him, Michael McDowell cuts to the inside of Ryan Blaney. You're right, Matt. This looks like a Talladega or Daytona race in turn two. Two and three right everywhere towards the middle to back end of the field. Top ten have got themselves strung out in single file as Elliott tries to make the move on. Derek Krauss for 10th position. Krauss had a spin in this race and now finds himself in the top 10. On board with the Applebee's, colored, uh, Applebee's car in the way on the outside of turn three and four and losing places quickly. Yeah, LaJoy losing a spot to Daniel Hemrick further back. But yeah, I mean, this is madness on the restart. And this is why so many guys either stayed out or just took two tires to try to get track position. Todd Gillen, who started on the front row, has fallen back. He was second a moment ago. He's now fifth. Lost three places there. And now he's about to lose another one to Christopher Bell. So this strategy has not worked for them. Here comes Martin Truex Jr. to try and follow his teammate through. And Ryan Priest is in there in the 41. Here comes Austin Sindrick up the inside as well. Overtakes all over the place at the moment. But the strategy has worked for Kyle Busch, who's put his nose in the cleanest air of anyone, and he shows the way to turn one. It is an RCR 1-2 right now. I can't imagine hmm. the last time they could say that. It might be just lap 58, but they'll take it. This is the seventh race of the year that Kyle Busch has led, but his time at the front looks to be minimal because here is Christopher Bell with a run on him into turn one. Bell will dive into the corner, slide up, try to clear Busch, and he will. Oh, no, problem for MTJ. He's not got much pressure tires at the end of the stage. He's going to have to come back. He's got a left rear puncher. We stay green. He's got onto the uh, warm-up lane, to use an Indianapolis term. And we got a car on the wall Car there. on the wall. I think that was Josh. Car in the wall is Josh Berry in turn three. And I think he's had a left front go down. 
because it is flat and he's up against the wall in turn three and it's come to a stop. Boy, what a massive moment for this caution to fly. Green flag out, and Christopher Bell from the lead gets the whole shot. A nose in front of Chase Elliott as they go to turn one. The question is here, can Chase Elliott or someone take the fight to Christopher Bell at the end of this stage? Elliott thought about trying to move Bell up the racetrack there in the middle of one and two, but it had to relinquish the position. Bell to the lead, Elliott slides in behind him, and it's Bush from Larson, from Sindrick, from Keslowski. A little bit further back is Hosevar. That's worked out really well for the 77 team, hasn't it? All of this shuffling around. He's inside the top 10 with Chase Briscoe. Continual madness behind them. They go to turn one and they close right in on Elliott. Spoiler! Oh, and oh, Kyle caution. Larson and Kyle Busch both spin in turn one. Larson up into Bush. They both pound the wall and they crash in the middle of turns one and two. Bush continues on with damage. Larson will eventually pick up a gear and get going, but it's the two Kyles with a coming together on the final lap of the stage. Here comes Christopher Bell to the line. Yellow flag waving along with the green and white checkered. Bell takes stage two. And we'll have to figure out what happened with the two Kyles. They were side by side for what? The sixth position. Green flag in the air. Stage three gets underway with Penske cars first, second, and third. After the cycle of pit stops, Sendrick has Blaney to his inside. Diving below both of them goes Chase Briscoe in turn one. And we're going to stack them up three wide for the leadoff two. Oh, contact between Briscoe and Blaney. Sendrick comes out of the corner with the lead. And that slowed the rest of them up behind him. But it is Sindrick out front. Briscoe's been well slowed out of that. He's lost out to Blaney and Logano and maybe Hosevar. Three and four wide further back. Ross Chastain way up on the high line. So is Zane Smith. Christopher Bell is completely boxed in on the inside. But it's Sindrick leading off turn four. Uh, Bell like a hot knife through butter, carving through cars on the back stretch in turns three and four. He'll try to get a couple more if he can in turn one. He's right to the curbing to get squeezed to the inside of Harrison Burton. My goodness, he's putting that best car here in risk. Just got Brad Keselowski behind him, even further back. There's all sorts of dodging and weaving going on. Ryan Priest in there. Huh. Tyler Reddick, who's fallen way through the field after starting up front. William Byron's in the middle of this, as is uh, uh, Wallace Jr., Ty Gibbs at the back of the field as well. All manner of action going on at the back end. Oh, but Bell is almost at the pit wall to try to get to the inside of Chastain here at the line, and he's also going to get to the inside of Zane Smith. Christopher Bell knows he's got the best car here. He wants to get to the front. Uh, this great crowd is being showcased to a great battle between Ryan Blaney and Christopher Bell. Blaney is trying to absorb the punches from the much stronger competitor here, and he has for now, but he has to go 21 more laps. This time side by side, and Bell almost cleared Blaney off too, but wasn't quite there with the speed, and Blaney powers back to the front. 20 more laps of this for the 12 car. Can it be endured as they get towards the back of Derek Krause? With 20 to go, Bell and Nose in front in two. Blaney fights back. Again, not getting around the center of the corner quick enough is Bell. It looks like this is going to come all the way down to the wire between these two. Hold on into a minute. Again. Hold, hold on a minute now. I'm sorry, Matt. Are we getting reports that Christopher Bell says his car is blowing up as he's trying to what? complete the pass? And he is going to do it this time. Bell's completed the pass out of four. Blaney's crossing over. Bell just came on the radio and said that he's blowing up. Blaney back to his inside in turn one to try to retake the lead. And I think he's going to do it. He is. He is. It's Daniel Suarez is up ahead of them. Blaney completes the retake and gets out at front. But Bell with a nose down the inside towards three. Doesn't certainly look like, like he's uh, having engine dramas. And Blaney this time goes low and covers Bell off. I think that made have spook the 20 guy. He goes up the track. And Blaney keeps the lead. Yeah, Bell is in trouble. Bell is in trouble. He He's is. off the pace on the exit of four. Unbelievable. Ryan Blaney now streaking away from Christopher Bell, the dominant car of the day. Can you possibly believe it? Game over. No, no way. Oh. Unreal. Now he's still under okay. power, but he's off the pace on the back stretch. You hold on a second momentarily. Now Cindric swings underneath him, and oh, but yeah, on the straightaway, Bell is off the pace massively. Cindric blows by him. Four laps to go. Ryan Blaney, the leader, by now a second and a half. Trying to get through this traffic, Matt, has shrunk his lead. 
Lagana has just passed Bell for sixth, so Bell down a seventh position now as he limps his way home. Blaney now has got past Suarez, and Daniel will try and hold it out around the outside, but Blaney cuts him off. Position or track position gained. Three laps to go at Gateway for Ryan Blaney. Blaney across the line in that neon yellow and black number 12. Austin Sendrick is forging forward, imploring his Ford to get towards his teammate and the leader. It's 1.1 seconds. Blaney's got Noah Gregson next up ahead of him. Not the easiest man to pass either, but the, the gap is absolutely falling down here as Sindrick is giving in everything towards the end. It'll be two laps to go in a moment. They're in the middle of turns three and four. Penske 1-2 upcoming here at Gateway. Christopher Bell losing another spot to Austin Dillon as we're down to two laps to go. And Ryan Blaney leading by a second and a quarter. He's through turns one and two. The white flag is next for him. Dillon up to seventh. Bell down to eighth. Here are the leaders. Blaney's looking pretty secure at the moment with Suarez up behind him. Oh, Blaney's slowing down, is he? Yes, Blaney's slowing down. He's let Suarez through anyway. They go down side by stone to the corner. Is there a problem for the 12? Hold on a minute. Suarez is through. Here comes Austin here comes Sendrick closing in at the white flag. Blaney slows. Austin Sendrick goes by at the white flag. The final lap begins. Ryan Blaney slows. Austin Sendrick goes through to the lead. Can you possibly believe it? Blaney slow out of two. Here comes the two car down the back straight away. What has happened to Ryan Blaney? We'll get caught up with that in a moment. But we have to celebrate our winner because Austin Sindrick out of nowhere, his day has just got massively better. For the first time in 85 races, Austin Sindrick is going to victory lane. Win number two for car number two. Austin Sindrick steals the win at Gateway. Ryan Blaney has to be out of fuel. His car slowing yeah. up. Nearly to a grinding halt coming to the final lap. He's still trying to coast to the flag. He's still trying to coast to the flag. He's going to fall all the way out of the top ten. And Austin Sendrick, his teammate, steals it away. Oh, Unbelievable. Finish. And Blaney's not going to make it. He's creeping. He's going to be outside the top 20. The line. He is. He's not going to get in the top 20. What a shame for Ryan Blaney and some disappointed fans in the grass. He's just crossed the line now. Oh, despair for Jonathan Hassler in the 12 team and for Ryan Blaney. Delight for Austin Sindrick, who's going to burn it down. 85 races since he won the Daytona 500 in 2022 as a rookie for his first career win. Now he wins at Gateway.